Joining us now is Marcus Buchecha Almeida, the BJJ superstar himself. What a debut. Marcus, tell us how you're feeling right now. Feeling great. I think it was, it was a perfect night for me. Could get the submission. I could use my Jiu Jitsu. So I'm so happy right now. It was a highly anticipated bout for a lot of combat sports fans out there. Do you think you made a statement that you're one of the next heavyweights to watch? Ah, I don't think about that. I think I came, I came here to train a lot to do to get the job done, and I did it. So I'm not really thinking about the future like that. Uh, my head was thinking about the debut, and now uh, my steps, my step, next steps, gonna be thinking about my my second fight. So I think I need to learn to walk before I want to run. So that's what I want to do. I want to keep grounded and no rush. We've got some questions here now from the media. This first one goes out to Steven Irvine of MMA Radio. Steven, the floor is yours. Steven. We're gonna move on to the next question. Next one will go to Jude Briosis of Overtime Heroics MMA. Jude, please go ahead. Hey, okay, thank you. Um, Marcus, good to see you finally stepping on to the one circle and showcase your talents. Um, it's safe, it, it's safe to say that you won that fight easily, um, did not take any damage, and uh, you finished the fight under the first round. Is a quick turnaround something that you are looking forward to? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it was easy, but I think the game plan worked really well. I knew if I strike against Anderson would be really bad for me because he's a legend on kickboxing. And I was trying to avoid his best game and trying to put my best game. So that's what exactly what I did. But I knew if I couldn't take him down, easy i could get like a lot of damage and it it could cost me like the fight because if you get damage and you can really work the take down so could change the whole fight one punch he has a guy that he has uh one punch knockout so i knew that so that's why i was so careful with the distance um uh, do you want to get back to the circle um, quickly? Yeah, for sure. I know December 5th, it's a big one coming up. So I want to be part of that. And let's do it. All right. Looking, looking forward to that. Thank you, Marcus. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for your question, Jude. We're going to go back to Stephen Irvine of MMA Radio. Stephen, please proceed. Yeah, Marcus, congratulations on the victory. That was a, a very impressive debut. First round submission. Now, we expected that type of fight and we expected you to win that way. But I just want to know, how is your boxing? Do you feel if it stayed on the feet, the result would have been the same? Uh, being honest, uh, of course, I'm training a lot. I'm training my boxing. It's it's getting much much better. I'm training with uh, Cartel Cubes and everyone from American Top Team. And my game is being evolving so much. And of course, if I say that the fight wouldn't be different, like if I strike against him, the fight would be the same thing. Would be, I would be lying because Anderson is a legend on kickboxing. I knew if I strike with him, <laughs> I could be like the fight with the end a really very different way because he's way much better than me on the striking. I knew that, so that's why I avoided the the striking game against him. So that's why I tried to use my best game. And that's what, what I did. But my my striking is improving for sure. I appreciate your honesty and we can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Our next question will go to Kyle Siegel of Going Live Podcast. Kyle, the floor is yours. Kyle, are you with us? Hey, Marcus. Um, Congrats on a great choke. You know, we don't see the north-south choke too often, especially in professional MMA. You had one of your one colleagues, Gordon Ryan, give you some high praise, you know, saying congrats. What does it mean to get some praise like someone in, you know, with his caliber in the jiu-jitsu community? But not only that, you know that you're in a company, you know, who's actively recruiting some of the best jiu-jitsu, you know, practitioners in the world. Yeah, it's great. Uh, Gordon is a great guy. Uh, uh, we know each other. We have the opportunity to fight against each other in uh, 2019. And it's always good to, to get the... When people from Jiu-Jitsu recognize, and not just him, but I'm getting a lot of messages from all the black belts around the world, that all my friends uh, saying that they love the debut. And when I fight, I know I'm carrying like a Jiu-Jitsu flag with me and I carry, uh, carry a whole community, and that's why I know I have a lot of support from the BJJ community. So that's uh, really great for me, and I, I'm, I'm glad I can carry the flag, the Jiu-Jitsu flag, really well. Yeah, we're in uh, California, so there's a reason we woke up about 4 a.m. to watch you fight, you know, because uh, you're, we know your resume, and I mean, you know, sooner or later, you may see a one Jiu-Jitsu card, which is awesome, you know, for your resume too but yeah. congrats again can't wait for your next fight thank you. thank you thank you very much and thanks for wake up really early for that <laughs> marcus tell us what your plans are after this are you flying back to the united states are you flying to back to brazil where is your home right now uh i moved to florida so it's been one year the since I moved to Florida, I was 10 years in California, but I made a move. I made, uh, now my flight is straight to California where I'm gonna spend a couple of days because I live, like I said, I live, I used to live there for 10 years. So all my friends, my sponsors, they all there. So I'm gonna visit Easy, them, yeah, celebrate. Yeah. And then I go back to Florida where i where i'm living right now uh where i train and where i'm gonna spend most time of my life right now talk to us a little bit about your training camp you talk about cartel kubis who else is a part of your training camp yeah i think first of all i would like to say thank you guys very much everybody from american top team uh, everyone there, my striking coach, Cartel Cubes, uh, my wrestling coach, uh, Steve Moko, my Jiu Jitsu coach, Leonardo Vieira, that was with me today here, uh, my conditioning coach, Diego Lacerda, uh, and my head coach, uh, head coach, Cona Silveira. All these guys helped me so much since day one when I got there. They treat me like as part of the team since day one. So it was really good. So once I got there, I had like the feeling that I was going the, the great, the right move because every day I saw so many heavyweights training together in one place that for me was something that I never seen in my life before. And room, a room full of heavyweights training, not just the heavyweights, but I mean, to have a lot of heavyweights was something that you don't see often. And I was training every day with legends of the UFC, Bellator, some from one. And I was feeling ready because if I could can train with these guys and I can do good. So I, I, I know I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing good. So that, the confidence that the training that I gave to me was something Unbelievable. 
Now, another big heavyweight matchup that was on the card tonight, Anatoly versus Amir Ali Akbari. Tell us your thoughts about that matchup. Yeah, that was a great match because, uh, like they said before, would it be like a, a boxing match, right? But until the first knockdown, then after the knockdown, they started using the wrestling. And it was great because they were like going after each other and was a really good, really good fight to watch. How he used his wrestling, the lockdown, the headlock control was something really amazing. Marcus, that's all from us today. A big congratulations to you. Hope to see you really soon inside the One Circle again. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate that.